This time I was out training a dog team and things went really wrong because of me. This time things went really, really wrong. I was out on one of many many training runs. I was out with 12 dogs, 8 experienced and 4 not so experienced dogs. And that's the way how we're working, we bring experienced dog and the non-experienced learn from the experienced dogs. During our training run we sometimes cross bridges. We see these bridges as an important part of the training because then later on when we're out on the longer tours we had to cross bridges up in the mountains. Bridges over the creeks, open water and so on. It's a part of the life out there. So if we can make the dog experience with this back home, that's super. When you cross a bridge, you want the dog to be relaxed, calm, not panic, go slowly. And this is what we want them to do. This time, in my team this time I had Kiwi. She's a quite young female and I was 100% focused at Kiwi because she hesitates a little bit when she walk over the bridge. We run the dogs without neckline and I can talk more about that later but when you don't have the neckline if something happened with the dog the dog can stop and you see it directly. So Kiwi was walking a little bit behind without neckline hesitating for the running water under the bridge and I was focused on her but suddenly class further in the front of the team not in the lead position but further on suddenly he jumped to the side screaming I don't know if he scream and jump or jump and scream or whatever but I directly heard this is not good I stopped my quad went forward to class took him out of the team carry him over the bridge, hook him in a position on the land so he didn't need to stand on the bridge and I had to release one of my leader dogs to, to actually make place for him in the team there. Then I put an anchor in the front so the team was standing there. This is the reason why we practice coffee break. Now the dogs figure out, okay, is it coffee or what? Because they come down quite quickly and you can't have a team that's standing and screaming because now focus is class focus is what is with his leg i could see that it was really broken so very quickly i called tostina and she could reach us with with the land cruiser uh, so we can load him in the car and stina took off with class and went back home and start calling a veterinary I came with a car to Matti and the dogs and luckily it's very close from here from home and I was able to drive there with the Land Cruiser, it's four wheel drive so that worked fine and when I came there I met Matti coming with class in his arms and I lifted him, I took him and lifted him into the car. Uh, I could see on his leg that it was not good. It was definitely broken. Um, so while I was still in the car on my way home, I called the veterinary immediately. And yeah, it was Sunday evening, so they are not ordinary open hours, only the emergency. And after I explained the situation, uh, the veterinary there um, they said it wasn't necessary to make a surgery right away but I could come in so they could put a bandage and give him some painkillers if I wanted <coughs> uh, <coughs> luckily uh, we had a splint and some cohesive bandage at home and I also have some painkillers so in consultation with the veterinary we decided that I should splint his leg as good as I could myself and give him some painkillers and then 
come into the clinic the day after. When things go wrong like this, we follow routines. It's a small accident or a big accident like this, but the routines are very simple. One, make situations safe. Don't create more problem. If you're out with a dog team, you had to hook the dog team somewhere. You can't have a dog team that suddenly take off because you try to solve other problem, because then you have a bigger problem. So make situations safe. Two, exam situation. Is the dog hurt? What have happened? Is it bad? What do I need to fix now, right now? Uh, where is my position? Is it on weak ice? Is it snowstorm? Exam situation. And then, could you make some quick fix? Like, put a bandage, stop bleeding or something like this. Class was not bleeding, so it was nothing I could actually do out there. So I, number four, calling for help. So I called Tostina and she came and picked him up. So you should have in your mind when you're working with outdoor, when you're working with things that have a risk, you can be carpenter and you cut your fingers. You should have these routines. What do you do if something goes wrong? Now we evacuate him quite quickly, not dramatic at all. It was just a very, very bad feeling. Because when a dog hurt like this, when you're standing out there, you don't know what happened now. Is it, is it something that you could repair? Is it something that you can't repair? Is this end of the life for the dog? Um, when I was uh, splinting Klaas' leg uh, and hold it in my hands, um, I could feel that both bones in his leg was totally off and it felt really weird and I could feel how they moved and clicked inside his leg. Monday morning I was in contact with the veterinary again and now I got to talk to Mikael who is the head veterinary at the clinic. <clears throat> and I got the time for x-ray. So Matti stayed at home with the dogs and I loaded class in the car again and drove the 100 kilometers up to the clinic. Um, there he first, first got examined, uh, listened to his uh, heart rate and so on and then he got some sedative to calm down during the x-ray. The x-ray showed what I was thinking, that um, Klaus had uh, both bones in his leg were off broken. But the Mikael veterinary assured me that this was a good fracture and that he was able to fix it. And that Klaus should be totally recovered in the future. And that was such a relief. So they splinted and bandaged uh, Klaus' leg again and a surgery was planned for the next day. Klaus hadn't been uh, drinking or eating enough the night before, so before we went home he also got, uh, it's called drop in Swedish, I think it's called intravenous uh, drip or infusion in English. Um, well. He got this uh, drip and so he got some fluid and nourishment back in his body before we went the 100 kilometers back home again.
so right now it's morning and Estina's out taking care of the other dogs I'm preparing some breakfast that we can have in the car it's quite early and uh, we are heading towards Yellowvare and the veterinary because today he's going to make a surgery of his leg the broken leg So today it's Saturday and it's uh, four days since uh, Klaus had his surgery and he's doing fine and he seems to like to be inside even though he would prefer be out running with his uh, with other dogs. Um, he's never been living inside before and it's amazing that not a single time there has been and any accidents on the floor since he came in so he tells us when he needs to go out and pee and poo and that's great. What they did at the surgery is that they fixated uh, Klaus bones with a metal plate and screws and uh, everything went very well and the veterinary was very happy with the results but uh, we have to go for at least I think two times for new x-rays to check so everything looks okay and that nothing has happened in there. And then Klaus need to stay six weeks inside indoors and under supervision all the time. So me and Matti need to take turns in doing things outside and we can't training or feeding the dogs together. It's some planning, but we'll manage. And 10 days after the surgery, I will need to take the stitches of the wound. And that I will do myself. I have done that before and I think it's quite easy to do by myself. So we don't need to go up just before, because to do that. Uh, Klaus is and can support on his leg already. And he already did that the first day after the surgery and uh, yeah it feels really weird for us humans I guess to see it and for me when I know how it looked a few days ago when it was totally off and you're thinking that it's just newly fixated with a metal plate in the leg 
when you have 50 Siberian Huskies like we do, things like this happen now and then. Luckily, not often, knock knock on wood. And if you look into this just in the economical part of this, if you look at it as a company, the huge costs of uh, veterinary care and the surgery, which are super expensive in Sweden, and you look also into all the extra time and work me and Matti has to put into this then it's not economical or financially adjustable to do it but we really love our dogs and want them to give the chance if the chance is there for them to recover if you like to support us and the dogs we would be super grateful and you can either do that by becoming a patron or you can send a small token through PayPal. You'll find links down below in the description here. And yeah, well, usually I say I hope you enjoyed this video, but it might, might sound weird this time. But give us a thumb up, write a comment and Subscribe if you don't already do to stay tuned on our life, adventures, dogs and the outro tips that we give on this channel. So until next time, take care and bye!